He's a tugboat and a friendly tugboat too. A friendly tugboat too. Oh, Theodore likes to do the things that friendly tugboats do. Hello. Do my fish look unhappy to you? They sure do to me. I wonder what's wrong. I think I'll call a pet shop. Hello, Pock Walk Pet Shop? Yeah, it's the Harbor Master. You know, my fish look, well, they don't look happy. No, no, the fins are fine. No, no white spots on their scales. Oh, oh I see. Well, th thank you very much. <laughs> they don't think that fish can look unhappy. But they're my fish. I think I know if they're unhappy or not. I know what Theodore would say. No, he doesn't know my fish either. But he does know pugwash. And let me start at the beginning. Theodore and Pugwash the mini sub were going for a cruise together before dark time one night. Theodore, do you think we'll ever get to go out on the ocean? Said Pugwash. Maybe. One day, said Theodore. But I'm an ocean tug. And I'm a great undersea explorer, added Pugwash. But we'll have fantastic adventures together. They were just passing Lily the lighthouse on their way back when Pugwash dived deep. Then she popped up again in another part of the harbor. Why did you do that? Theodore called, moving over to Pugwash. Oh, I don't like lighthouses, explained Pugwash, kind of sheepishly. Why not? Theodore wanted to know. First, they shine their light, explained Pugwash. And then they blow their foghorn. It's a very scary sound. I thought undersea explorers aren't afraid of anything, smiled Theodore. Oh, I know that, said Pugwash. But she couldn't stop a little shiver running down her hull when she heard that foghorn again. The following morning, Stewiak took Pugwash to the shoreline outside the big harbor. Pugwash was going to take underwater pictures. Remember that Ecom Seacom Circle isn't far from here, said Stewiak. Stay close. I know, said Pugwash. You see, some said Ecom Seacom Circle was a place where ships sometimes got lost forever. Diving, announced Pugwash. Time passed quickly that day. Pugwash cruised along, taking pictures of the underwater rocks along the coast. Soon, it was time for her to come up again. But Pugwash was in for an awful surprise. She broke through the surface and saw Lunenburg Lighthouse. Lunenburg was shining her light, but Pugwash just knew what was coming next. Foghorn! She shuddered and dived again. As deep as she could go. Back in the big harbor, Theodore returned from work to find the dispatcher talking to Emily in an urgent voice. Stewiak has reported that Pugwash is missing, he said. I would like you to help find her. I want to go too, Theodore said right away. This is a job for an ocean tug, the dispatcher told him. You just don't know the area outside the harbor well enough, Theodore. But I know Pugwash, said Theodore in a firm voice. He does spend more time with her than anyone else, said Emily. The dispatcher was thoughtful for a moment. Very well, Theodore, he said. But remember, Constance will be in charge out there. Meanwhile, Pugwash had found the entrance to an underwater cave. I'll be safe from that lighthouse in here, she told herself. Pugwash slowly entered the cave. Then she thought she heard voices. She turned and got a fright. Three rocks were staring at her. Who, what are you? She stammered. Lo and behold, the rock 
dogs began to speak. Harem scarum. Shock 'em, freak 'em. We're the rhyming rocks of Ecom Seekum. Boom! And a third rock. And that's when Pugwash knew she had dived straight into the terrible Ecom Seekum circle, where ships sometimes got lost forever. Pugwash began to back out of the cave. And the rocks began to talk again. Hold 'em, fold 'em, Subwar Mouse. She'll come back fast when she beholds that lighthouse. And that scary foghorn, added the third rock. How do they know I'm scared of that sound? Pugwash thought to herself. Then, maybe the rocks were right. How could she go back up there? Pugwash decided to try to find another way out of the cave. She floated on through the cavern. another opening. But as soon as she was poking her nose out, a great light from above made her gasp out loud. Right away, she was sure what the light was. A monster lighthouse waiting for her up there. And if it was a monster lighthouse, she knew what was coming next. The biggest, loudest, scariest foghorn in the whole wide wet ocean. At that very moment, Theodore and Emily were arriving at Shipwreck Rock. They could see Constance the Coast Guard ship and Stuyak by the light of the big, bright, full moon beaming down on the water. Theodore, called Constance, stay close to the shore and out of the way. Emily, you come with me. I know I can help find Pugwash, Theodore said softly. No one else believes I can. Theodore was floating towards the shore when Lunenberg's light hit his face. Lighthouse, he said to himself. Foghorn, he added. Suddenly, Theodore had an idea where Pugwash was, but Constance had told him to stay close to the shore. Oh, what should I do, he tried to decide. Constance was leading the search team, shining her powerful searchlight at the water. There's only a cave down there, said Northumberland, rising to the surface. The submarine was helping look for Pugwash, too. It was too small for me to go inside, added Northumberland, but I didn't see Pugwash anywhere. Turn off that light, a voice called out. It was Theodore. You're scaring Pugwash, he added. Theodore, what are you talking about, said Constance. Pugwash is afraid of lighthouses, Theodore said quickly, especially foghorns. Theodore, we don't know what you're talking about, said Emily. She always dives when she sees a lighthouse, Theodore replied. She won't come up because she thinks Constance's searchlight shining down on her is a lighthouse too. Are you sure about this, said Constance. She always does, repeated Theodore. Very well, said Constance, turning on her searchlight. We'll try this. Everyone held their breath. Nothing. No sign of Pugwash. We'll keep looking my way, said Constance, turning her searchlight on again. We must have missed something the first time. Theodore, it's time you went home. The others began to head off again. I was sure I was right, Theodore said to himself. At least the moon is shining, said Northumberland, beginning to dive again. It's as bright as a lighthouse down there. Lighthouse? shouted out loud. What is it now, Theodore? said Constance. Pugwash is down there. She won't come up because she's afraid of the light from the moon. I thought you said she was afraid of the lighthouse, said Constance, beginning to lose her temper. Or was it my searchlight? Well, which is it, Theodore? From under the water, continued Theodore, she might think the moon is a giant lighthouse, shining down on her. What are we going to do, said Stuyak? Make the moon go away? Theodore saw that Owen, the giant oil rig, was nearby. That's exactly what we're going to do, he said. We have to move Owen here, now. 
Theodore, snapped Constance. I've heard just about enough of your wild ideas for one night. We know how to search for someone out here. My friend is down there, said Theodore, with a voice as hard as the steel he was built from. And I'm going to find her. I'll help you, Emily said quietly. I hope you're right about this, Constance said slowly. I hope I'm right too, Theodore thought to himself. Pugwash was still staring at the beam of light. She was sure that with a light that big, there must be a horrible foghorn sound with it. The fear almost froze her where she floated. Far above, Theodore and Emily were using every bit of strength they had to move over, over Ecom Seacom Circle. Here I come to make the moon disappear, hollered Owen in his extra loud voice. the light was going out. Hmm. Lighthouses don't stop shining their lights, she said to herself. She began to wonder if that bright light really had been a lighthouse. At last, the big oil rig was in position. The tugs had got him between the moon and the water like a giant umbrella. Turn off your lights, Theodore called. Everyone did what he asked. No sign of her, said Northumberland. Theodore heard Lunenberg's foghorn in the distance, and he had another idea. Before he could think about what to do, Theodore blew his loudest whistle. In the dark depths, Pugwash heard something. Something familiar. Could it be Theodore's whistle? Or was it those rocks playing tricks on her? Theodore would be trying to find me, she decided. It must be him. And it really is time to be an undersea explorer. This isn't working, said Constance. Wait, just a little longer, please, called Theodore. Look, cried Northumberland. It was Pugwash. Pugwash was safe. Everyone blew their loudest whistles. Hooray! Hooray for Pugwash! Hooray for Theodore! Pugwash and Theodore floated very close to each other. I knew you'd know how to find me, Theodore, Pugwash said softly. You're going to make a great ocean tug. And I knew you'd be okay, Pugwash, smiled Theodore. You're already a great undersea explorer. Wasn't that a good idea Theodore had to get everyone to turn off their lights? Wish I had a good idea about how to make my fish happy. I just know something's wrong, even if no one else thinks so. Wait a minute. Turn off their lights. That's it. It's night, and I'm here at the office very late. And usually, I turn the light in the tank off because it's time for my fish to go to sleep. There. Thanks for visiting us here in the big harbor. We'll see you all again next time. Oh, they look much happier.